Time, 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 time. Time sometimes is not on our side. But right now, I think we're doing uh, pretty favorably. And I wanted to put this video out and talk about a checklist of what to do and what to get into as we roll into this potential Bitcoin and altcoin markets bull run. Now, that's not to say that this is the only way to do things. There's a ton of different ways to do things. But right now, I think this is the time to really get things done. Because as people have said before, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So now is the time. Let's put together a little bit of a strategy. So for me, what I'm doing, I always take a look at how much time we have. And whether you believe it or not, I personally believe it. I believe that the Bitcoin having, when we have a reduction in the amount of Bitcoin that is mined every 10 minutes, it leads to more scarcity. And we know that Bitcoin isn't just scarce. It is finite. There's a big difference. And finite means there's only 21 million. That's it. So when we have these events, we can see that there's, there's a reduction in Bitcoin that is getting pumped out every 10 minutes uh, to those miners. So this is around the time that everything happens. And of course, we got less than nine months, which is pretty crazy to think about. Didn't we just go through a monstrous bull run not too long ago, 2021? And then, of course, everything fell apart in 2022. Now, 2023, we're kind of uh, making things up. But this is when everything happens, quite honestly. I think around this time is when we actually got to just put our head down and actually do the dirty work. Also, if you believe that around this time is when the have or about this time is when we have like uh, these big bull runs or in 2025, like I personally believe, or if you're a believer like uh, Bob Lucas, uh, who believes that really the blow off top will be in 2024. Whatever you believe in, there are indicators to take a look about what's happening. So we're not just guessing in the dark. And those are things that we should be doing. So I, uh, I always like to, to listen to Bob Lucas because he has a contrarian view to mine. And I don't want to be in an echo chamber because guess what? I'm not right 100% of the time. So I linked uh, his channel in the description. You can check him out. And uh, he's been a trader for decades and uh, did pretty good in the last uh, cycle. So we'll see which one, uh, which one hangs up or which one does well and, and, and stands the test of time. So for me, what I'm doing, I always think of it like this. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. I'm not going to go over it too much. But I always feel, and data will support this, is that it's better to dollar cost average, if you're just talking about dollar cost averaging, uh, during those reset years. Now, of course, uh, the best time to buy would be when Bitcoin hits its all-time low. Good luck timing that. Everybody thought it was 17,000 in 2022. Then all of a sudden went down to 15,7 or whatever it was in November 2022. So, eh, what are you going to do? I personally can't time much. Uh, Baron Rothschild said the exact same thing. I made all my money selling, never selling the top, and never buying at the absolute bottom. So for me, like when I take a look at these, these reset years, and just as a refresher, reset years in the four-year cycles, it would be two years after an all-time high. So that would be 2015, 2019, and again, right here in 2023. That's where I think we are. If we take a look here, this is an example of dollar cost averaging, taking uh, $100 per week and investing it in just into Bitcoin, in this example. If you would have done that, starting on January 1st, 2019, and then you would have hit the top, you would be up 6.5x. So you would have put in $15,000 and would have had almost 100,000. That's not bad. What if you would have done that in 2018 in the, um, in the ever depressing year of the big dips? Well, you would have gone up 7x and people will say, well, Rob, isn't that, isn't that better to do? Just do that. You have six and a half to 7x. Is it worth the risk? Is it worth the risk and the, and the turmoil of going through this and, and buying and buying and buying and seeing your, your portfolio go down and down and down? And uh, I will tell you this, that's what I did in 2018. <laughs> and it's also what I did in 2022. Yes, I did this. And it was not a great strategy. I, I must admit, there's a little anxiety. There is a lot of things of you checking your portfolio. And of course, people say, well, don't look at your portfolio. Hey, I'm only human. These things happen. I think you could have done a lot better in the reset years, just starting here and moving forward. I'll be damned if Ben wasn't right on that one. So 
if we did that, but what, well, what if we wait until the, until the reset year? I mean, excuse me, the halving year, because that's when everything starts to go up, right? Well, you'd only 4X, which isn't bad. I mean, you're doing a bunch better than the S&P. So you'd have put in almost 10,000, would have had 40,000. And if you wait till the bull run, eh, you kind of missed it. Let's just be honest. You're only going up one and a half X, which is when all your friends are going to call you. So we can see that in Bitcoin. We can see that in Ethereum. If you were on a 17X as opposed to an 11X in the halving year or a 2X in the bull run. And my favorite, Cardano, you would done a 39X. 39X in the reset year, only a 26X, boo-hoo, in the halving year, and only 3X in the bull run. So these are the things we want to take a look at. And this is what I am doing. Dollar cost average. Now, there's a lot of people that say, Rob, that's a bad strategy. You should do this and this and this and this. Maybe, but that's not what I do. And people will talk about instead of dollar cost averaging, value cost averaging, which is another way to do things, which is instead of doing it every day, you just take your lump sum, whatever you have. Let's say you have $10,000. And you just pick like five points and just go, okay, what I'm going to do is 2,000 here, 2,000 here, 2,000 here, 2,000 here. And do that. That's value cost averaging. Or people like to trade. I'm not a trader. I'm not even going to talk about trading because that's not my thing. If you want to watch somebody on trading who's really good at it, go watch Tom Crown. Uh, he knows what's going on, and uh, or Gareth Soloway. He seems to know exactly what it is. So this is what I do. Again, tons of ways to do things. Now, just so you know, if you'd like to run these simulations yourself, Ben's got a. He just added this into his website into the Cryptoverse. And if you go over on Tools and click on DCA Simulation. You can run a simulation just what I did for any amount that you want to. You can take it from Bitcoin to a host of other cryptos that are out there. And you can do the, the purchase at daily, weekly, or monthly, and a start date. All the things you want to do to your heart's desire. This is what I uh, am presently using. It works pretty well. There's a link in the description. You get the first month 10% off. Hey. So there is that. Oh, what was I? And that's great. We figured out maybe this is a, a something you want to try for buying. Well, how do I not screw up and how do I sell? Pretty good questions. So I did this video and there's two videos I'd like you to watch. One of those is called why and when I'm selling 80% of my crypto in 2025. And the other one is don't make these crypto mistakes. There's a link in the description. They look just like this. Click on that and do it. What is surprising to me, I guess maybe not, not surprising, is that the one where I talk, talk about all my screw ups, and all the scrubs from the past, so you don't make those same mistakes. Uh, didn't get that many views, honestly. 16,000 views. Although, to be fair, it was two months ago. So when I look at this, I'm like, you know, you gotta remember something, which is very important. It's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And in this video, I talk about my big mistakes, the Voyagers, the Celsius. I also talked about the FTX, the Mount Goxes, the DeFi hacks how everything relates to Michael Saylor and his strategy, who is a billionaire, and your strategy, maybe not a billionaire, and what and how that relates to you. Again, my goals aren't your goals. Maybe your goals aren't Michael Saylor goals. And a whole vice versa of different things, a whole plethora of different things. So that one is, I would highly recommend you watch that one because it kind of just lays things out. Again, don't get lunified. Don't go crazy. And then also uh, this one where I talk about when I'm gonna sell. This one had a lot more views for some reason, almost 90,000 views. And I talk about the different indicators. And what I will tell you this is you can look for these here, the, like I said, link in the description. But if you go to this website, it's 100% free. Don't freak out. Uh, you just click this button and you can sign up. All the thing I ask for is an email and I don't even spam you. I just tell you when there's a new video. And that's it. So you come here, a lot of different things. Gaming is a good one. I think it's going to be good. But module three, investing. I always, yeah, it's always tough to go through this first one. There's Chewy, my favorite. Uh, yeah, I talk about my golden rules. And then, of course, the lessons where I talk about the things I screwed up on and everything else and risk. Also, dynamic DCAing, why a dollar cost average, a whole host of things. And of course, the indicators that I'm using, the cycle tops, pi cycle top, NUPL, and time and risk band, and also the Z scores, two year moving average, well, and reserve risk. And actually, these are all, all seven of these are top callers, in my opinion. And of course, it leads into this video itself. 
So watch those, recommend. And then I haven't really talked about, I'm gonna skim over this, but this video here for the, the dynamic DCA, we've talked about this before. This is uh, just some data that I pulled from, from Ben's site. And essentially it's just like this. This is when I'm buying for these days and risk bands. This is all about the time that essentially Bitcoin stays in these bands. Now, when you go to the site, you can pull up Solana, you can pull up Ethereum, a whole bunch of different things of when they're in these risk bands. And you can see that as we get overheated, that's another indicator to look at to sell. I wrap all these indicators together, the NUPL, the MVRVZ score, the Pi cycle tops, time and risk bands to make the best decision for me. And then as I move forward, I either decrease or increase my buying and or selling. I don't sell until I get over here to 0 0.6 or 0 0.7, which is when things get pretty overheated. MicroStrategy doesn't care. They're just buying all the way through. And of course your friends, <laughs> they just, they don't buy until they get to over here, which is like the wrong thing we just took a look at. And also there's another, there's a, a tool that was also added in. Uh, it's called Strategies Dashboard. It's pretty interesting because like it'll show you and, you and you put in like whatever you want, whatever you think it is, like Bitcoin, all these different things, the projected price. Let's just say Bitcoin is at 200,000. And what it, what it shows you, and there's a, you can watch the video. Ben explains this much better than me. But what it shows you is that conservative, moderate, aggressive, holder, YOLO, and sea of tranquility, as, as he calls it. You can see that these are the times to sell these risk bands and how much you would make. Because some people would say, well, I'm just going to wait till, like, if I think Bitcoin's going to 200,000, I'm selling on the day it hits 200,000. Let me tell you, uh, for me, that's a, not a great strategy because I tried that a couple of times ago, didn't work out too well. The last bull run, I actually dollar costed, dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out, worked way better. And this one, I'm going to be even more conservative, but it's up to you to whatever you want to do. But you're going to see here, like, if you have one Bitcoin, and you think it's going to 200,000 and you want to start to sell at that 0 0.5 wristband, you can do that. And then, you know, you can take profits along the way. And it gives you, it's like dollar cost averaging in, dollar cost averaging out, depending on how aggressive you want to be. And of course, for me personally, like you would think I'd be more aggressive, but I'm not. I'm actually, I'm, I'm a moderate at this, this wristband here. I'm going to start selling around 0 0.6. It's not much but it's something because right over here, here's the 0 0.6 down here, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we'll see if we get there. So those are the strategies. And then lastly, there's one more thing I want you to, to look at uh, moving into this bull run, whenever that happens. So we talked about dollar cost averaging and buying and value cost averaging and trading, which I don't do. We've talked about not making mistakes because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And then we talked about selling, but there's a one thing that is probably the most important part, and that's the, the mentality. There's a link in the description of every single one of my videos. I don't talk about it that much, and I really should. It's called Mindset, Daily Stoic. It's a free website. You sign up for a daily email. They send you these actionable advices from the Stoics from the Roman era. The big one would be Marcus Aurelius, former emperor of Rome. 161 BC, I think, AD. And it gives you like just a little bit of a bulletproof mind as you go through these strategies because not everything's going to be easy. It's going to be very rocky. Not everything goes up and to the right forever. So great philosophies from one of the great Stoics, Epictetus, one of the slaves that became a master, Lucius Cincinnatus, who was, he was a, he was a Roman farmer who became a warrior king, essentially became the emperor when Rome started to fall, brought it back, and then relinquished his power, went right back to being a farmer. Not only that, he did it twice. So there's great stories from there about how to steal your mind and get through this. Because I gotta tell you, if you think like this is the easiest thing of all time, it's not, it sucks, it's hard. And if it was easy, everybody would be a billionaire already. But that's it for today, so look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I don't care where you get your information from. On days like today, it's just more like strategy days because the news cycle is kind of slow. 
But next week should be pretty big when we take a look at what the Fed's going to do, which I'm just going to give you a shocker. They're going to raise rates on Wednesday. But uh, that's it.